Tatum and his scoring trend. Back when the Celtics made the finals in 2022, his scoring went down every round. Now this year, it's gone up every round, including 30.3 points per game in the East Finals. So, Perk, Jason Tatum sees this as a second chance, if you say. Do you have a word for him? <laughs> you damn right I do. And look, you damn right you got a second chance, and he better embrace it and make the best of it. Word of the day is royalty. Royalty, okay? The definition of royalty, the most well-known and admired member or members of a particular field or category. And when it comes to being in the Celtic or playing for the Celtic organization, one of the most historical franchises in sports, we're talking about Celtic royalty. We're talking about Paul Pierce, Bill Russell, Larry Bird, the list goes on. And why do I say that? Because when I think about Jason Tatum, not only does he not have an opportunity for us winning the NBA championship, but he got to win the finals MVP to be submitted in Celtics royalty. Meaning, you got to go out there and be the best player on the floor. Damn it, I know everybody right now is picking Luka as far as being the best player in this series. And you go out there and do what you're supposed to do and be the best player on the floor and outplay Luka Doncic, then you're going to get both of those trophies. And now you're in a different conversation. You're viewed differently. Now you have royalty. You're in royalty, Celtics royalty, which is a high thing to be in. So your standard for Jason Tatum is not only winning a championship, but it's also becoming finals MVP. Do you agree, Danny? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I can't say I disagree with him. Uh, the stakes are high. I, I have Lakers tied, so I don't want to see them get that 18th one. But um, in order for them to win, I, I think he has to be that guy. And the future face of the league, sp spoken of uh, in that, that sense, he has to be finals MVP. He has to play well. And I think he's building his rhythm. So right now he's showing that he's, you know, up in his points in each, uh, each series. This is his year for redemption. I'm interested to see where he takes it this, 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 this stage. So this series to me is the most interesting. It's hard to predict. I, I want to see the first couple games to even give a prediction. But, you know, he, a lot relies on him and also Porzingis and his health. Yeah, and oh, I think no. we, oh. Oh, no. Oh, no, you, you don't get to see a first couple games and then give a prediction, uh, Danny. That's not how this works son, on this side of the media, brother. That's not how it works. That you got, is, that you is... got three days. You got okay, three days. You got three you days before the games start. But, Mark, you do so well. You do such a great job of talking to the players yeah. and understanding their personal struggles but also their triumphs. When you look at Jason Tatum, that difference in numbers, what do you take away? I think there's a different gleam in his eye now. You know, two years ago when they lost to the Warriors, you, you know, you're a little younger. He's still young, but thinking, ah, I could get back here. Mm -hmm. Then he's not back there the next year. After they won the uh, Eastern Conference Championship this year and he got handed the trophy by Cedric Maxwell, he told Max, I'm going to get you one this time. I'm going to get you one this time. And Max like, hey, I got one. I don't need you to get me anything. <laughs> I need you to get one for yourself. So I do think there's a more of a competitor competitive fire for JT. I think there's more of an urgency. And as, as Perk noticed, like, to get in the Celtics lore, to, to get talked about alongside Bird and Pierce and, and Russell, you got to win a championship. KG, you got to win a championship. So, Perk, what are you looking to see from Jason Tatum on the floor that indicates that he is really that guy? Well, I mean, it's outplaying Luka. And, and look, Jason Tatum... He's been here before, right? This is a new stage for Luka Doncic because I'm comparing him to Luka because they're headlining this or this NBA Finals, and it's almost looking, it's almost as if we're looking at Floyd Mayweather uh, boxing match in Vegas. Floyd Mayweather, majority of the time, already have won the boxing match before the other opponent have even stepped foot in the ring because of the stage that has been set. When you talk about the NBA Finals. Right, and a lot of guys, like, you know, when it's their first time going to the NBA Finals, you could get caught up because the media is 10 times more, right? You think about the stage that you're on, all the distractions, your family, everything. You got to push all of that aside. Jason Tatum has been through that before. Luka Doncic, he has it. So at the end of the day, I feel like that's Jason Tatum having one up. He has to come out and have a... Let me, let me put it to you like this. He has to have, he has to do what Paul Pierce did to Kobe Bryant in 2008. He outplayed Kobe. 
right, and won the two th- yeah. and won the Finals the MVP. That's what Tatum has to do in this series to Luka. You know, Luka has not played in the NBA Finals, but he has played in the EuroLeague Championship, and that's pretty stressful. So it's perhaps not quite the same, but it's oh yeah, high level he, too. He's- I think we've pretty much. Uh, put it to bed that I don't think a lot of my teammates hate me. My former teammates hate me. Uh, I don't know, you know, kind of what was being shared um, intimately with some of the media personnel that was, you know, reporting over the past few years. I'm just talking about when I first left Boston. Um, I've embraced all those guys. So it's it's been the same. I've uh, taken them under my wing in a, in a very different way. And uh, they've allowed me to do that uh, while also becoming who they are. I told them from day one when I first met them that I want to see them be better than me. And in order to do that, you have to give them secrets of the game. You have to give them, um, you know, mental, um, you know, secrets as well to help become a better player. I think those guys were ultra talented, JT, JB, but off the court. I mean, we know our fam, we know each other's families. And that's the type of relationship I've always wanted outside of the game of basketball is to be able to have that balance to compete with people on the court, but also treat them like my brothers and um, be there for them and whatever they need. So Kyrie has struggled against the Celtics since leaving the team in 2019 free agency. He's just 2-6 and six in Boston, including the postseason, and has lost 10 straight games against the Celtics overall. But we have seen some different type of energy from Kyrie this postseason specifically. Now, Perk, do you believe playing in Boston will still have an impact on Kyrie Irving? Yeah, absolutely. Actually, it's going to be a positive impact uh, for the Dallas Mavericks. And if you're a Dallas Mavs fan, because it's going to bring out the best of Kyrie Irving. Here's the thing, right? That's never going to go away. But I will offer some advice to the the fan base of the Celtics, and that's to leave him the hell alone, okay? (laughs) Leave him alone because you're not the ones that have to go between those lines and actually guard this man. Right now, Kyrie Irving has been in the zone. And... It's no Batman and Robin on this Dallas Mavericks team. It's a Batman and it's a Superman. Both of those guys are the leader of this team, and both of those guys on any given night between him and Luka could be the best player on the floor. I have a quick story real quick. I was with the New Orleans Pelicans. We were playing the Cleveland Cavaliers when LeBron was there, and it was a close game down the, towards the end of the fourth quarter. I mean, towards the end of the game. And I remember a fan yelling out something at LeBron James. And Coach Alvin Gentry, he turned around. He said, hey, man, shut up. Shut up. Don't say nothing to him. We do not need to get him going for the simple fact that you do not have to guard him. And that's the same advice I'm giving to the Boston fans. You can (laughs) boo him before it's taking it over the top. Leave that man alone. Perk, perk, perk. And it's not just Kyrie. It's also don't do that to Luka either. Perk, you know better. You know how Boston gets down. <laughs> I was there with you, Perk, as a rider. I know how they get down. They're not going to not say something. They're going to be on him from the moment he steps foot off the plane. I remember after the Lakers beat them, I mean, after y'all beat the Lakers in 2008, y'all fans still pushed the bus and rocked the bus that the Lakers had. They're going to be on him. The difference is how will Kyrie react? In previous years after the trade, he reacted – and it affected his play. Now he's in this zen where he's not reacting. Zen is a he's perfect not word. saying anything. He's not poking the bear. So the fans are going to be on him, but I do think Kyrie's in a different mindset now. He just wants to win. He just wants to play basketball. And somehow, I don't know if he can put some earmuffs on or something, he's got to drown them out and just play which yeah. is going to be easier said than done. Yeah, I'm with Mark on this. I think he's in a, in a better space. We don't know. If you've been traded from a place, I have, luckily, I have not been booed. But there's different types of emotions that come out when you go back to a place you used to play at. So we don't know how his emotions... I think the Boston fans think that the way they've acted in the previous years has worked. If you see the, the, the numbers, you see the record that he's had, they're going to continue. I don't think it's in their best interest, but they're going to continue to be on him. And we just don't know. And I don't think Kai knows yet, you know, when he's out there. I think the first couple shots will get him settled in. But, um, you know, when you go out there and you play against your former team, you're either going to have 40 or you're going to have five. You know, it's going to be a really great night or a bad night. So I think we'll see what happens in the first game or two. So I didn't want to give my predictions early, Perk, but I will give you my prediction. So, uh, but, yeah, I think Kai, the best of Kai is going to come out in this series. Well, well, let me say this. Okay, the Boston fans do need to realize this. They're going to be who they are, but messing with Kyrie Irving, is also messing with Luka Doncic because they're <laughs> brothers, right? We, they, we hear the stories about them going to dinner together, their relationship, and we know one thing for sure, two things for certain, that Luka Doncic 
he embraces mm -hmm. that type of hostility and people going at him. And when I say going at him, if you going at Kyrie, Luca's going to take it personal yeah. as well. Is that yeah. the best is interest? That is, and yep. is that best for the Boston Celtics? Yep. Luca averaged 35 points, 15 rebounds, and 12 assists, which was pretty much his average oh. versus the entire league this year <laughs> against the Celtics in the regular season. And this is where we started to see Danny that lob perfected. Yeah, these guys really came into their own second half of the season. I don't know what kind of group they were the other times they met with the Celtics. But the last 20 games, they were the best team in the league. Yeah, the Mavs, they had 54 lobs in the playoffs. The closest team to that, the Nuggets, with just nine. Now, we talked about lob – I don't want to say it's Lob City. I know you've got Lakers <laughs> size that's tied to the city, but that's what we're watching in the postseason. If it was Luka doing one thing, it was also Jalen Brown doing a complete another thing on a different level, talking about Eastern Conference MVP. Ooh. I mean, you remember when he crossed up Luka? Oh, I yeah, that's nasty. He's got he's playing with a chip Ooh. on his shoulder and I expect Better tie them to shoes up. Very aggressive this series. Yeah, Brown held Luca to the lowest effective field goal percentage of any Celtics player. Ooh. And the defense just keeps coming. That's the thing about Boston. They have guys that they can switch that can defend. It's not just Jalen Brown. You have Derek White. You have Drew Holiday with championship experience. No, they're going to keep rotating, 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 keep fresh bodies on them. And it'll be interesting to see how Luca responds to that. And if we're going to talk about fresh bodies, this guy has reincarnated himself. Kyrie Irving, just his cardio, his commitment to making this squad work, his commitment to being the best partner in crime for with Luka Doncic as a parent. Kyrie was 18 for 43 from the field against the Celtics in the regular season. Yeah, he's a professional, strong-minded guy. I'm wondering how being in Boston is going to you know, challenge his emotions, but I, I see him being you know, the stable Kyrie we've seen in the last, you know, two series. You heard the boos. The regular season yeah. is not the postseason. We know he's showing up as It'll his be best worse. self. And then last <laughs> but not least, Jason Tatum shot 12 for 19 in the paint against the Mavs when his three-pointers weren't falling. So, Per, do you expect to see Tatum getting downhill like we see right here? He, he needs to. When you talk about Jason Tatum, he's 6'9", 6'10". Play with force. When he plays with force, he's a completely different player. I don't want to see the finesse Jason Tatum. I want to see the force Jason Tatum. Yep, new users can get a bet reset up to $1,000 in bonus bets if your oh. first bet doesn't win. Oh, there you are. Oh. ESPN Bet is the only place to find exclusive hey, offers handsome. from your favorite <laughs> and handsome ESPN shows and personalities. Make sure you download today. So the Mavs, they were sitting in eighth in the West entering play on March 7th when they took off. They won 16 of their next 18 games behind the league's best defense and fourth best offense. So Perk, what's the biggest difference between the Mavs of then and the Mavs of now? Well, obviously the trades, right, and they they come together collectively. But this is all about Luca and the way that he's playing right now. Look, I've been in AAU gyms all weekend long, and all the hood been coming up to me telling me <laughs> praising Luca. Luca is invited to all the barbecues, all the spade games, all the domino games, all the pity pack games. Damn it, Luca could walk in any hood in Texas, and he's just and he's okay. They have embraced. This level of play, his mentality is on a different level right now. That man is on the mission, not only to prove, not only to try to go out and win the NBA championship, but to prove that he's the best player on the floor night in and night out.